ionic selectivity in calcium channels. Unlike potassium channels, which have a selectivity filter, and potassium ions, which are relatively larger than sodium ions, calcium channels select between ions of almost identical radius. The crystal radii of sodium and calcium ions being 0.95 and 0.99 angstroms, respectively. Moreover, calcium channels are known to admit much larger ions. The largest observed is tetrametyl ammonium with a radius of 2.8 angstroms. Thus, a different mechanism of selectivity from that in potassium channel must be at play in calcium channels. Like potassium channels, calcium channels are very selective for its physiological ion. However, when calcium levels in the extracellular environment is reduced to very low levels, the calcium channels become permeable to both sodium and potassium ions. Luckily, this is a situation that never happens in real life, but it does tell us a little bit about the mechanism of selectivity of calcium channels. Moreover, if calcium channels are now increased at micromolecule concentrations, calcium, function, calcium ions function as blockers for off calcium channels. This is shown in the next slide. In figure A, the sodium currents for calcium ions when extracellular calcium levels are nominally zero. The sodium current is then blocked by 1.3 micromolar extracellular calcium. In figure B, our currents carry principally by calcium when extracellular calcium varies from 3 to 30 millimolar. Physiologically, the extracellular levels of calcium are kept at the millimolar range, so sodium permeation is not expected to occur under these conditions. In, in figure C, is shown the magnitude of calcium currents when extracellular calcium is titrated from 1 to 30 millimolar. The divalent non-physiological ion, uh, ion barium also permeate through these channels, even at a higher efficacy than calcium. So what we can conclude from, so far from these figures? Number one, calcium channels in the absence of calcium allows the permeation of all the other ionic species such as sodium. At mi mi micromolecule concentration, calcium blocks partially the calcium channels. Second, at millimolecule concentrations, the calcium channel magically permeates only calcium. Molecular biology then gave us some clues for the reason to these interesting functional features of calcium channels. Calcium channels also have a p-loop like potassium channels, but there are the presence of the negatively charged glutamic acids in the p-loop which make these channels very interesting. Many calcium binding proteins possess binding sites for calcium built around glutamic acids. So the idea is that the p-loop actually bind calcium ions via electrostatic interaction of calcium ions with the negatively charged amino acids glutamate. This is better shown in this slide with a depiction of a calcium channel which is composed of a gigantic alpha subunit and accessory subunits gamma and beta. In the alpha subunit, shown here, the pore region of each of the four repeats, or motifs, in this case called motif 1, motif 2, motif 3, and motif 4, each, each of, this, of the four repeats harbor glutamic acids. So you can see here those glutamic acids in each one of the, of the p-loop of the each repeat. The evidence for the glutamates in the pore region of calcium channels serving as binding sites come from site-direct mutagen studies. The prediction is that the mutating glutamates 
in the P region for another amino acid, such as the neutral amino acid glutamine, the affinity for calcium sh should decrease. This is assessed in this experiment by measuring the effects of glutamate mutations in, on lithium currents through calcium channels. Lithium behaves exactly like sodium, so it permeates calcium channels when extracellular calcium is very low. It can be seen that the wild type channel, the lithium current, decreases when extracellular calcium is increased from 10 minus 7 to 10 minus 4. This decrease or blockade of currents reflect binding of calcium to one of the binding sites in the P loop. This binding site has an affinity close to one micromolar under these conditions. With successive mutation of glutamates, the affinity for calcium decreases as reflected by the shift to the right in the concentration current curves. We can put everything together now in this model in which calcium channels have two binding sites for calcium in the pore region. These binding sites are formed by the side chains of the glutamate residues. At very low levels of extracellular calcium, the binding sites are not occupied, so all the ions can go through the pores such as sodium. At micromolar concentrations, there is high probability that one of the binding sites will be occupied by calcium, so the sodium ions will be rejected at least partially. Then, at millimolar concentrations, both sites, binding sites, are occupied by calcium, and then electrostatic repulsion will move calcium through the pore. More recently, uh, the crystal structure of, of a sodium channel has been resolved as well. The crystal structure of, uh, of a bacterial sodium channel called NAVAB has been solved, and, and the, the general properties of sodium channels is quite similar to what we discussed for the KCSA uh, potassium channels. One of the major differences, though, is that sodium channels have a, a selectivity filter that works more like calcium channels. So two glutamate residues are present in this uh, selectivity filter of, of sodium channels that allow the precise binding of sodium ions to the selectivity filter of these channels. So we are talking about very different mechanisms here. Potassium channels select potassium by direct interaction with, with, with the backbone carbonyls of the amino acid residues that line the ionic selectivity filter. So the potassium, when it goes through the selectivity filter of these channels, it, they completely lose the hydration wire. However, sodium channels, and we think uh, calcium channels as well, this the selective filter of these channels work by binding of the ions to the side chain of the glutamate residues, and we think under these conditions, uh, these ions move through the selectivity filter, still bound with at least some partial uh, water molecules. So this is an exercise. What are the major differences and similarities on the mechanism of ion selectivity between calcium and potassium channels? Discuss in terms of multi-ion occupancy of pore. Discuss in terms of role of the side chains of amino acids. And discuss in terms of electrostatic repulsion of ions inside the pore.